So before I go into the word, I have we have our pastor, our national pastor in the baptizing church in Nigeria with us this morning. Can you help me celebrate Pastor Deji Kurumi? I, I was so excited. Thank you so much, sir. I was so excited when you bossed me and you said you'll be in service this morning. This is a good time to be in TBC Abuja. Hallelujah. Amen. For about 20 minutes, I just want to encourage our hearts and show us something very important in the scriptures and help us to anchor our songs, our praises, and our thanksgiving on scripture this morning. The first scripture that God put in my heart is Psalm 92. And I'm going to read verses from verse 1 to 5. The Bible says it is good to praise the Lord and to make music to your name, O Most I. Proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. So we know Thanksgiving is not just something we do once in a year. Thanksgiving will be something that we do daily. We proclaim his love in the morning and his faithfulness at night. There is no day that we do not acknowledge the Lord. Verse 3. To the music of the ten-string lyre and the melody of the harp. For you make me glad by your deeds, Lord. I sing for joy at, the, at your hands, at what your hands have done. How great are your works, Lord. How profound your thoughts. How great are your works. How profound your thoughts. The second scripture I want you to read this morning is found in Colossians chapter 2. The first lesson that was read this morning came from verses 6 and 7, but let's read from verse 1. I want you to know how hard I am contending for you and for those in Laodicea. And for all who have not met me personally, my, my goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by fine-sounding arguments. For though I am absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit and delight to see how disciplined you are and how firm your faith is. In Christ is. Verse 6. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thanksgiving. In all that activity, in all that engagement with Christ, let the atmosphere be that of thanksgiving. You see, there is something, I, I mean, some of you may know. If you don't know, don't bother. The reason why I will often think about America. And one thing that happened in America once every year, I think it's even bigger than Christmas, is Thanksgiving. The last Thursday of November was dedicated for Thanksgiving. But you see, I decided to just check. How did it all start? On October 3rd, 1789, President George Washington made the proclamation to the United States citizens for a day of public prayer and thanksgiving. It was formally declared on November 26 to be devoted by the people of this state, I'm quoting him, to the service of that great and glorious being who is the beneficent author and of all the good that was, that is, or that will be. A nation recognized that their prosperity, God keeping them, they fought wars, and God kept them, and all the things that have come to them, the prosperity of their citizens, is not as a result of what those people have done, it's because of God. It's because of God, who is the source of it all. But you know, it was um, attacked. So many legislators, I mean, the House of um, Congress and, and all that, they didn't buy into that. So only some few states embraced Thanksgiving, the day of Thanksgiving. But there came 1863 when Abraham Lincoln declared it. A particular day on October 3rd, 1863, 
He acknowledged the goodness of God and said that America should not forget the source from which all the prosperity came. If a nation could do that, how much more individuals? But you know, I realized that this is not original to America. For they took it off the pages of the book of Leviticus 23. God had declared seven feasts in Israel. The Feast of Unleavened Bread, Passover, Feast of First Fruit, Feast of Weeks, Feast of Trumpets, Day of Atonement, Feast of Tabernacles. Seven feasts that God declared. But is it not amazing that God called them feasts? That all these celebrations are to be accompanied with great eating and drinking and rejoicing. But they must never forget what God has done for them. But you see, much more than thanking God for what he has done. Thank you, Father, for the promotion. We, get, we thank God for that. For the upliftment. For the deliverance. Many of us took ill this year. And we recovered. Many of us had contracted some diseases and all that. And we recovered from them all. It is good to give thanks for that. But I see thanksgiving should be seen from two angles. For you see, in Israel, as, it, as they celebrated the seven feasts, indeed they ate. Indeed they danced. Indeed they celebrated. But that was just first part of what they could see with their eyes. That was just the response to what God has done for them physically, providing for them, protecting them. But you see, in those feasts, something deeper was going on. Those feasts were signaling something deeper than just the physical things that they are seeing. For the Passover was foreshadowing the redemption from sin. That a day is going to come that we're going to be cleansed from our sins. The Feast of Unliving Bread was talking about Christ as our Passover who has cleansed us from our sins. Our cleansing from sin. The Feast of First Fruits was Christ, I mean, signifying Christ rising from the dead. Hallelujah. Rising from the dead. The Feast of Weeks, which is Pentecost, 50 days after the Feast of First Fruits, it constitutes the harvest, the coming of the Holy Spirit. It talks about the investment of God in the lives of the people when the Holy Spirit was received. Remember that it was on the day of Pentecost. Was it a coincidence? 50 days after they celebrated Passover, 50 days after his death, they celebrated the Holy Spirit came. On the same day they were celebrating the Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came. The Feast of Trumpets, it signifies the end of the agricultural year. And the beginning of a new season. But you know, we also know that it's the foreshadow of the, it's foreshadowing the second coming of Christ. Right? The second coming of Christ. The day of great atonement. We all know that that's the day that the scapegoats, one goat, two goats will be brought. One will be made to wander into the wilderness. The other one will be slaughtered and the blood will be brought into the temple. Signifying what Christ was going to do for us. The feast of tabernacles or the feast of the boots. This is where you must never forget. For they have now built their houses. They are now dwelling in houses, built houses. But when it's time to celebrate the Feast of Trumpets, everybody will leave their house. They will build a tent. They will remind themselves of the eve of entering into the promised land. They must never forget. Now plenty or, or abundance should not make us to forget. You separate yourself in the Feast of trumpets, or the feast, sorry, of tabernacles to dwell in booths, to remind yourself of your sojourn before entering into Canaan. It signifies the time Jesus will be revealed as the judge of the earth. For he's going to be revealed as a judge, and everything we have done will be weighed by him. Hallelujah. So you could see that what they were celebrating was not just mere festivals. They were celebrating something that had a deeper meaning. And I brought this up because this morning, I don't just want you to celebrate because he provided for you. That is valid. I don't just want you to celebrate because Christ Jesus protected you. I don't just want you to celebrate this morning because of what Christ has done. I want you to, sorry, because of what you have received from him. 
Because not everybody has received at least the way they see it. But there is something we can all celebrate. The new life that Christ has given to us. So the Bible says we should be rooted in Christ Jesus. But you see all those festivals, seven of them, they found their fulfillment in Christ Jesus. And that is the Jesus that you have received this morning. You have received him into your heart. And it's for, because of him that we are celebrating and we are rejoicing this morning. So I want you to celebrate not just because of what he has done, but because of the life he has given to you. The world was carrying us. This earth was carrying us because of the fallen nature. And it was, we're going to be delivered into hell. But before that could happen, Jesus had aborted that pregnancy. He delivered us from hell. And he gave us new life in Christ Jesus. This morning, I want your celebration to go deep down into what Christ has done for you. Hallelujah. We have established the fact that it's a festival, so we're going to have a lot of singing, right? We have also established that it's a time to bring what God has blessed us with before God. So there's going to be giving. And I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about the giving of your heart. Don't be distracted this morning. Give your whole heart. Hallelujah. And lastly, for some of you that remember, I said today we also be communion. Can we have the table? Oh, the ta is there. Ministers, can you move? We're also going to be sharing the body and the blood of Christ. Because that is what this season signifies. It's a time to remember what Christ has done for us. It's a time to never forget. Hallelujah. We must never forget. Thank you, Father. God wants gratitude to be the atmosphere of our hearts. I just want to say this last thing. When I became a Christian, my dad was a farmer. The earliest time I discovered, I, I developed thanking God, was the moment that I would be in the farm. I would be working in the farm. I'm telling you how the Holy Spirit developed in me. I lied not to you. I would be working in the farm and someone would tell me, don't just rise. Move back before you raise your head. And I will move back and raise my head and I will see a pointed something that will have maybe gushed my eyes out. I kid you not. Not once, not twice. I began, I became sensitive to the Spirit while living from day to day, just doing the things that were given to me to do. Folks, there is a way in which you think spiritual things are some special things. But I want you to know that this life that you have in God is what we talk about when we say the spiritual life. It's your day-to-day -day living among men. It's from, I mean, dedication to the, to the work that's been given to you in the place of work and all that. So this morning as you celebrate, as you dance before the Lord, I want you to dance and thank God, yes, for what he has done for you, but much more, he delivered you from hell. Much more, he invested the Holy Spirit in you. Much more, he has secured a place for you in himself. Hallelujah. And then lastly, you have a hope in your heart. You see that hope, it's not only beyond the grave. That hope is the fact that you are not just going to heaven. Heaven you have not seen. But the Bible talks about a new heaven and a new earth that will be made. So you see this physical world, a time is coming that we are coming back. The lion and the lamb will dwell together. There will not be sicknesses and diseases. It will be a perfect world. You see, part of what we are celebrating today is because the hope of that future is already in our hearts. Hallelujah. We give God praise this morning. We adore your name, Father. Can you rise to your feet this morning as we bless the name of the Lord? Let's give him praise. We honor you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for what you have done for us in Christ Jesus. Thank you for our heart that you have connected to yours. And now our heart is overflowing with thanksgiving. We give you praise. No one has the capacity to truly thank you. If not the spirit of God that you have given, your spirit that you have given unto us, it will have been impossible for us to give thanks the way you want us to. We give you praise, Father. First Corinthians 11. 
I want to read from verse 23. Sorry, I need help with this. It is good to praise the Lord. Thank you. To gaze upon His majesty to proclaim his love in the mornings and his faithfulness at night oh it is good to worship and praise the First Corinthians 11 23 for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me you may take the bread In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. You may take the wine. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We adore your name, O God, for a great day that we have set aside to acknowledge you, to bless your name, and to express our hearts of gratitude towards you. Lord, I pray, O God, as we are taking part in your body and your blood, if anyone is sick here right now, you are healed in the name of Jesus. If there is something you are looking forward to and you are believing that God will come through for you, receive clarity regarding that situation in the name of Jesus. There's a family member that you are trusting God for. Everyone, they've done their own bit and you are wondering how will the transformation occur. In the name of Jesus, the power of God rests on that individual right now. And that transformation, you begin to witness it in the name of Jesus. For that thing that has been diagnosed and no, they don't really have understanding. They are just guessing of what the situation is. In the name of Jesus, it is cleared. Did you hear? Cleared totally. And you are healed completely in the name of Jesus. For those who are awaiting news, good news. Efforts have been made. Proposals have gone out. Engagement consultations had happened. You are just waiting for that mail. It comes in the name of Jesus. And it's in your favor in the name of Jesus. For those who are trusting God for one or two things regarding the year 2024, this Thanksgiving ushers you into a new season in the name of Jesus. And those things that are on paper right now, they are dreams and visions right now. They become something that is being executed as you step into the new year now in the name of Jesus. Begin to execute now in the name of Jesus. The understanding and the wisdom required you have now in the name of Jesus. And so many people, your minds are limited. Not much is seen not because God is not ready, but because your mind is so little. Bible says we should not, how does the Bible put it? Limit the Lord God, right? This morning I pray that as we begin to rejoice before God, there will be an unveiling, the snapping of a cord that frees
frees you into the way God wants you to start thinking. Into the way God wants you to start visualizing. And you begin to take up that thing God has already put in your heart. And you begin to do it in the name of Jesus. You have removed that limitation that has not allowed God to move the way he wants to in your life. It's a new season for you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Before I leave this place, don't just dance. Let it be prophetic. The Bible says Jesus rejoiced in the spirit. He said he saw the devil. The devil fell like lightning from heaven. And he rejoiced in the spirit. What he was rejoicing about was something that had not yet happened at the time. So why not be like Christ this morning? Let's rejoice in the spirit. Let your dance step be because that you know that God has done it. Let your rejoicing and your singing be that you know what it means to dance before the Lord, to usher in what he has promised. Hallelujah.